two, one. Is there sound? Before I, I don't know why I'm shouting. <laughs> if there's not sound, then it won't matter that I'm shouting. Right, let's just double check. I'm so, so sorry. Technology is awful. I'm not good with technology. Alex is laughing because he knows it's so true. Right, live team, let's just see how many people are going to oh, join in once. Right, don't you start fidgeting and stuff. Right, we've got one. Lorna, you're in first. Oh, right, connections available. We have sound. Yes, sorry, 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 sorry. And I'm warning you all now, I keep getting poor internet connection at the top of the phone, so beware if I freeze up. Just don't count the wrinkles. I'm having a bad skin day today, so just don't judge. Um, I hope you're all well today. I've got Alex with me, dragged Hi. him off of Roblox. And Hi. yeah, you'll get back on soon, don't worry. Good morning to everybody. Good morning to all of my Dunbarney Primary School babies. Um, missing you all greatly. This is normally the upper school day today, so normally we would be in class, but as we all know, it's not normal times at the minute. Good morning also to all of Abernethy and any other school that I have got the pleasure of being in the company of. I hope that you are all great, Lauren. Yeah, Roblox, he's never off it. Roblox Minecraft, that's all he does. Right, we've got 22 people watching. Just gonna wait for a few more seconds just to see who's joining us. Don't touch anything you, I'm having bad technology today. Granny's watching, yeah, Granny's watching. Granny's always watching, she's always there. Yeah, that's okay, you can speak to me now. You don't need to try and mind. Granny is watching Alex, so best behavior today. If you tuned in yesterday to Primary 1 to 3, the boys were not in the best mood yesterday. Let's blame the, the clocks. They were not being particularly kind to mummy. And in fact, they lost their iPad time after yesterday's art lesson for a little bit. Just sit still and stop fidgeting. So yeah, apologies if you tuned in yesterday. My children were not on the best behaviour. We um, made a new patch yesterday that Primary 1 to 3 on a Monday will no longer feature Alex because it turns out the boys together are a bad influence. So, oh, oh we've got people here from Moncrief. Do you know where Moncrief is? No. That's near where Yaya and Papa live. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we've got people here from Moncrief Primary School today. Lovely stuff. Right, today, Katrina's watching. Katrina, just to warn you, this is a tricky one for the little ones, so if Glenn's doing it, just keep a good eye on him and help him a little bit. As I said earlier, oh, high school are here too. I'm so glad because actually this lesson is pretty much for four to seven, but if you have got a first year or a second year in your house right now who are still in their beds, drag them out because they can also do this. I've done this in the past with prime, um, first and second years, so drag them out. Now, it's an optical illusion lesson today. Yeah. Who can tell me and Alex what they think I mean when I say optical illusion art? Alex, let's have your answer first. What does an optical illusion look like? It's like, um, forgot. You forgot. You forgot. Right, let's see if anyone answers. What does optical illusion mean? And if anyone can think of an artist, Miss Rob, Miss... Miss Price is watching. Oh my goodness, Mr. Robertson there. Miss Price is watching. Miss Price, you might even be able to name me an artist that is very, very good at optical illusion art. You know lots about art. You know much more than me. So what do you come out with? Right, so this is quite a tricky one in places to do. Now, it tricks your eyes. Well done, Emma. Yes, it tricks your eyes. Okay, so it's quite an easy peasy one, but it gets technical as the lesson goes on. So to begin with, what we need first of all, now I prepared mine last night because I knew where this was going. You need a perfect, an absolutely perfect square piece of paper. Got it. Now, oh, hello. Now, you might already have it prepared because you might have watched the video last night. You might not. So I'm going to show you first of all how to get a perfect square piece of paper. This is very important. When you're doing optical illusion, it's all about perfection. So this is very, very important that it is a square piece of paper. So, I said to you last night that all you needed was an A4 piece of paper. We have got an A4 piece of paper. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to fold it in half to make it A5. So when you're folding, go corner to corner first. So bring up a corner, match it with the other corner, put one finger on top of it and really hold that down. Get your second corner, bring it up and hold it down. That's now tip and toe your fingers into the middle, into the middle of the paper, pressing down hard, bring your fingers down, one and two, and then bring those fingers left and right, and you end up with your perfect A5 piece That's of paper. 
Alex, shush. Okay. Okay, so that's step one. Now you're going to cut that in half. This, yeah, you're right, it was Esha. You can't remember his first name. Neither can I. I think it's initials actually. Right, going to cut this bit of paper in half. I've got a paper cutter at home. I've got a uh, um, paper trimmer at home, so I did mine last night, so I managed to get it to perfect size. But I do appreciate the fact that not all of you have got a paper cutter at home. If you do, run away right now. Go and cut yourself up a piece of A5 square paper, if you do. If you don't, don't stress about it. Right, so you have now got your A5 piece of paper. So we need to try and now make this into a square. So the top corner, I'm going to bring it across. Okay, I'm going to put it across and match up that edge perfectly. Okay, so you end up with something a little bit like this. A little bit like that. So you've brought that corner over, matched up perfectly. Now it's this piece that you're going to get rid of. So you can either fold it, or you can draw a line there with a ruler, or you can just use your eye and cut it. It's up to you. So you're now going to, Alice, can I borrow that ruler yeah. just for a minute, please? Thank you, sweetheart. So I'm just going to draw a line there now and I'm going to cut that edge off. So when you open that up, this will be your square, this will be your scrap bit of paper. So again, just try and cut that as straight as you can, try and stay on the line. Today I am looking for perfectionist cutting. And as per usual, this is live just now. Again, apologies, there seems to be not the best internet connection in the house today. So the bar keeps flashing up, so I'll try and catch it or Alex will kick me under the table. And if what? I see it, I'll freeze and then I'll catch you up later. Mm -hmm. So this is what you need for step one. So your square piece of paper. So I'm gonna give you a few wee seconds just to finish that off, to get your square. Alex and I, as I said earlier, we've already got one. If you've got a paper trim in the house, run away just now and go and get yourself a square piece of paper. If not, just finish this bit off for me just now. Um, as I was trying to say earlier, I got distracted by my son again. It's going live just now, but my mother reminded me yesterday just to say it is live, but I post all the videos on later on today. This is one of these lessons where some of you might need longer than others. So if you get a bit bored waiting, disappear and come back later, or you can always watch it when you've got more time to do and fast forward all the boring bits. Okay, so we have got our square piece of paper. Now, next up, what you need to do, and I'm gonna be very, very strict here. You need to choose four, four colored pens. It needs to be pens for this to work best. And try and have a variety of thickness. Now, if black is one of your colors, you can have two black paints or three or four in different thicknesses but four colors maximum do not go more than four otherwise your optical illusion will not work it depends what you want to choose here do you want to choose your favorite colors do you want to choose colors that are close to each other on the color wheel harmonizing colors do you want to go for opposing colors do you want to go for contrasting colors do you want to go for the primary colors do you want to go for the secondary colors do you just want to color choose colors that you like you can use any types of pens that you want. You can use markers, you can use biros, you can use gel tip pens. You can go for Sharpies. If you're using Sharpies, be careful of your mum's tables. Put a mat underneath you because it'll come through this thin paper. Alex and I are going to be working on boards today. And when you are doing your lines, it's really important that you go left to right, up to down, whatever direction you want to go in. But make sure you go right across the paper. Don't stop when you meet the edge of the paper. Okay, do not stop when you meet the edge of the paper. So it's maybe a good idea right now to run and get yourself a mat or something to put underneath your square piece of paper. Okay, so Alex is choosing his four pens. It looks like he's now going to go and put a fifth. Oh, nice. Right, Alex, he's chosen these, which are fab. He's gone for four different colors. One thing I would say to him is the nibs, the tips are all the same thickness. So you might want to take one of them away and go and find a thinner or a thicker pen. It gives you a good bit of, what's the word I'm looking for, depth to your picture. Different line qualities, that's a nicer one, yeah. So he's now going for a uh, um, highlighting pen. Look at that pen. So, choose four pens. I've got a million here. I'm going to keep collecting them. So I'm going to go for a thin sharpie. I'm going to go for the pink that you just chucked. I'm going to go for 
black. Oh, I've got some black in the artwork. So I've got two thicknesses of black. And let's go for something. Dark purple. Oh no, that's too girly. Mm. I'm the girl that normally says it all night pink. Right, so I've got my four different colours. I've got a variety of black, I've got purple, I have got a pink and I've got a blue. Right, hope you've all managed to get that. Right, you'll also need a ruler for step one. So you've got a ruler, you've got a piece of paper, square piece of paper, and you've got your four colour pens. Right, you are now going to go either left to right right to left or up and down the way you're going to create some lines that all go in the same direction they cannot crisscross over you are not making tartan or check they are going either vertically or horizontally whatever way you decide is best for you now you're using your ruler one little tip for you is to get the first line in place use the edge of the ruler against the edge of your paper it's really important that you keep your lines nice and straight another wee tip for you is don't move the ruler for a few seconds after you've drawn your line. If you move it really quickly, you tend to smudge. The ink will be wet and you tend to smudge that ink. So just take it easy. This is a really nice therapeutic lesson today. It's really nice and chilled. It takes a wee while to do step one. You'll be very happy to know mm -hmm. that... Yes, by interrupting me. Yes. Well, how many colours is that? Black, yeah. pink, oh, green. Right. Um, That's five. Can I count on this line? No, you can't. You've got five pets, you've got five colours. Thank you. Right, back onto it. Now you've distracted me. I don't know what I was trying to say there. Right, yeah. Don't move the ruler too quickly. It'll smudge the lines. And I don't know. There was something else I was going to say there, but somebody's interrupted me and broken my train of thought there. Right, so I've got my pen. Ooh, what might be an idea is on the scrap bit of paper. Check all the pens are working. If you live in a house like the Cochrane's, half the pens don't work in this place. So check your pens on the back. Your paper are working first, Alex. Right, so place the ruler at the edge of the paper. <laughs> place your ruler at the edge of the paper and just draw a line to get you started. But as I said earlier, don't lift that pen up until the ink is dry. So that's step one. Really, really, really simple. Then what I would do, I when I teach this in class, see kids, they, they put the lid on the blue. They pick up the pink, they draw another line, they put the lid on that. Pick up the purple and do another line, and they're sat for about half an hour doing the lines. Do maybe ten lines in blue. It'll take less time. So I'm going to place that down on top of the blue line that I just drew. Can you see that? Okay. And I'm just going to draw that line again. Now, if you do make a mistake, if your line ends up and colour it in, it's not going to be the end of the world. This pen's going to go, isn't it? So if you do have an absolute disaster and you look up at the screen to see me and your ruler moves and all of a sudden your line's not straight, don't stress about it, just make your line thicker. But the most important thing, Emma's saying it's not working. What's well, not working me? Oh no, might be a technical hitch again. So make it a bit thicker. Or does she mean her pen's not working? Oh, I hope she means the pen's not working and not me. Right, so I'm just going to keep going with this. Well, I'll work out what Emma's meaning. And you are hopefully right now with your first pen just doing a series of lines all in the same direction, top to bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn my paper around now and I'm going to use the edge of that paper just to get another line in place. It's really important that these lines are straight. Really important. This is the most important thing. Emma says it's working now, right? That's good. Sorry, Emma. I didn't see you in time. Yeah, that's rulers for you. So put it against the edge of the paper, inside the paper. No, that's because then if you draw the line there, it's going to be on the mat. So put your oh, ruler on the edge of the paper. Right up against it. Right, first line. Hold your ruler with one hand, do the payment line with the other. No sound and I'm glitching. Oh, what's going on? This is not going well today. This is a disaster. I'm not starting again. I'm 20 minutes in. Right, so there we go. I'm sorry, Ali. I'm sorry, Cheryl. I'm sorry, Emma. Right, there we go. So that's your step one. Now, I want you to treat the white like the white is your fifth colour. So you shouldn't have more white or less white than the rest. So I want you to treat the white of the paper like it's your fifth colour. By the way, in future, if you want to do this again, 
You don't have to do it with white paper. Yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. If you want to do this again in future, you don't have to do it with white paper. Right, I'm terrible at multitasking. I'm going to keep trying to look up and double check. We've got no technical issues while I'm working. Alex, what is it? Well, you're, you're busy with that, so you can check as well. If you see, you're doing as many lines as you can. Because eventually, this is one I prepared last night, you want it to look like this. So eventually, you want it to look like that. So you, do you see that the white is your fifth colour? So the white of the paper is actually your fifth colour. So you're going from this yeah, to this. Step one, this will be about step five. Wow, well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into this while you're all working. So, I um, just flood it with as much glue as possible. Just go back and forth as you speed up. Just make sure that that ruler does not move. You want to keep them nice and straight, Alex. You are off to a flying start, my boy. Well done. As it gets going, what you'll now find is you have got these blue or whatever your first colour line was to help keep you right. So that'll help you keep your ruler on the And as I said earlier, if you have an absolute disaster and the ruler does go squint, just make it a thicker line. And don't be scared to put, if you do do it, don't be scared to put another line on top of it. Okay, so you are just flooding this bit of paper with as many lines as you possibly can. I just mucked up there by accidentally making that a bit of a thick one at the top. That's okay. Should have had some background music. Well, it's one out already. Is it? Yeah, well, it was showing you before. Mm -hmm. Pens in this house never last long, do they? No. We've got millions of them, but they never last long. Maybe what we could do, maybe one of our tasks for next week is to find all the pens in the house and test if we're working on it. Oh, <laughs> That's how desperate times have become in the Cochrane household. We're going to test our pens next week. No, we're not going to do that. Mm. It's never going to get that boring, is it? Right, remember as well to take your pen lines right to the edge of the paper. And don't forget, you should be going right to the edge. Don't stop Emma, it's glitching again. I'm really, really sorry, sweetheart. You're not missing much. All you're missing is me um, drawing lines. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Just wobbled. Okay. Right. An angry face, is that because of the glitching? Mm, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Right, I'm going to get my brighter colours involved now. In fact, I'm getting the black pink. I'm not in a pink mood today. Is this working? Okay. Just be aware if you're using Sharpie pens of your tables and everything else that you're working on right now. Yeah. Oh, it's just comes up. Alright? Yeah, I was testing to see if the pen comes up with this. Good stuff. Okay, done my Okay, excellent. Right, I'm just going to give it a few more minutes and then I'm going to move on. Um, But as I said earlier. I need to start with a light colour. It doesn't matter what colour you start with. It doesn't matter what colour you start with at all. As I said earlier, I'm going to move on soon, but you might not be finished your lines. But don't honestly worry if you haven't finished, you can always catch up at another time. Um, what I'll probably do is call time on the lines in a minute and show you your yeah, and show you what to do once you've finished your lines. So I'll probably get everyone to stop stripes and stripes. Yeah, I did that on purpose today, Gillian. I wore stripes on purpose. I'm, I'm getting loads. Look at all these angry, angry faces. Oh no. I wonder what that means. Is it glitching? I hope it's the angry face. I hope it's not that I'm doing a bad job. Right. Nearly there. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of. I put a really, really nice bright sharpie. I'm just going to in this box. Yeah, let's go from the bright pink. Let's go just to, to punch it. Yeah. Okay, right. 
Just a few more lines, I'm going to pop into this and then I'm going to move on. So as I said, I'm going to call time and a few minutes time with the lines. Please do not panic, I am not saying finish. What I'm going to do is show you what to do once you've finished your lines purely so that you can work out what to do next because I don't really want you all sitting watching me draw millions of lines. You're probably bored silly right now. Um, plus, I'm struggling to think of what to talk about to fill the, the void of the space. Gillian, you're in Australia right now. I hope everything's okay over there. Um, I'm not sure if you're off work or not, but I think you should get an Australian version of this on the go. Ugh. What do you think? Or we could do a wee collaboration one day. Okay, right, I've put in a few weekend lines. Alex, you've got millions more lines to do. He yeah. thinks he's done. I don't. But the white, <laughs> he's only got two colours for the start. And the white is not, it's featuring more than the other two colours. So he needs to still keep going with it. You're looking for something a little bit more like this. But even that still doesn't have enough lines in it. We miss you, Gillian. We really miss seeing you all. Okay, right. Just gonna do a few more. I am honestly, I love doing this. I could sit and do this all day if I could. Oh, I it might, it. it might drive me a little Yay. bit mental, but I would love to do this all I day long. Sure. Right, how are you getting on? Well, that's a nice pink that you've put on yours. I want to. Now, we are turning this into optical illusion circles. There is nothing stopping you, once you get the hang of this, doing squares or any other shape that is perfectly geometric. So you could go circle, you could go equilateral triangle, you could go for a square. Um, could you go for a hexagon? Yeah, you could probably go for a hexagon, but it needs to be a perfect shape. We're keeping things simple to do, however, we're just going for it with the circles. Right, so you've got this done or you've got this done. And what I want to do just now is get you to pause. Alex, you can just keep going because I'll be able to help you in a minute. Um, just want you to pause just for a few seconds with the stripes. You can go back to it, but I want you to stop what you're doing just now to get your circles ready for step two. So step two is you are going to need some circles with a cross in the middle, okay? So I, last night, prepared some to show you what I want them to look like. Okay, so you've got a big one, you've got a medium one, and you've got a teeny, 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 tiny yeah, one. Teeny, one. teeny, tiny one. Okay, so we've got three Wait, use circles. All yeah, go for okay. it. Give you nice, nice strength to your, to your work. So we've got three different sizes of circles. Now, it's up to you how you do this. I did it just by getting a bit of card that was from yesterday's lesson. And I got a circle, and I drew around the circle inside it and cut it out. Now, if you don't have any card, it will work with paper, but paper is not as good to draw around it. It's too thin, it's quite hard to get that perfect shape. So I'll just show you quickly, if you don't want to look at this, if you've got your circles already, then just keep going with the lines or something. Right, so I've got my template here. Can you see that okay? Yep. And I'm just going to, with my pencil, just draw around something circular. Now, it could be a cup, it could be a... a tumbler but it needs to fit inside this can't be bigger than this okay so i've got my circle ready and i'm now going to cut that out now it's really 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 important that you cut this out so it's a perfect circle so no snipping no hacking at the circle nice smooth long cuts so when you're cutting the shape I always find the shortest side to start with because then you've got less to cut into to get to the circle. Cut up to the circle, stop as soon as you meet that line, turn the scissors on their sides and get the scissors open as wide as they go, right down to where that hinges, get the paper right nestled in there, okay? And you're just gonna do, you should be able to cut the circle out, I would say in about four cuts, maybe five. Okay, so you're cutting slowly and you're turning the paper at the same time, nice and controlled. Opening the scissors up nice and wide again, that was one cut. Staying on that line, nice and controlled, nice and slowly until you get to the end. So I'm halfway there actually. So again, open the scissors as far as they go. Hiya Kathy, I'm glad she's enjoying it. What school does she go to? Is she old bank? Or Bulans? 
if she is, she'll get my friend, Mr. Denny. Okay, so we're just doing nice long cuts. So I did that in about five cuts. Okay, so it's a perfect circle. So no hacking, no speediness, just take your time. Right, this has to have a cross in the middle of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it in half and then open it up again. So it's really important that that is perfectly in half. If it's not perfectly in half, it's not going to work. So it needs to be perfectly in half and really, really get your fingernail along that edge. Get really, really nice and sharp. In fact, if you want to, back on yourself again. Okay, so you've got one line. You see that? Great. If you want to, draw with your ruler that line so you can see it. It needs to be, it needs to stand out, but that for me is enough. Done. Now what you do is you fold it back again. Now fold it over. It's quite tough with card because it's getting thicker and thicker. I mean, if you think that's actually four bits of card that I've folded in half. So again, fold that in half, maybe fold it back again in the other direction so that when you open this up, da -da, you've got a cross and it's perfectly in the middle. But the only way that works is if you fold it in half once and you fold it in half again. It needs to be in the middle. If it's not in the middle, your optical illusion picture at the end will not work. Can you see that? Okay, so I'm focused. Okay, so I did three of those last night of different sizes. Now again, go back and do that in a second if you want. Megan has Mr. Denny. Oh, yeah. that's my buddy, Mr. Denny. Okay. Right, we have got your square piece of paper with all the lines on it, my circles, which you may probably haven't done yet, but you can go back and do those in a minute. I just want to show you what to do next because then I'm going to hang up on you and you can go away and do all the bits that you've got to do and then post me the photos of the end result. Okay, so I've got my circle and I've got my square. What I need to do is I want this to have a cross on the back. So I am going to fold my paper in half. Okay. Okay, it needs to be perfectly in half. Yeah, you do. Now remember, corner to corner, it needs to be perfectly in half. If it's squint, this won't work. So perfectly in half. So corner to corner and then a nice crease. Really run that finger along the fold of the paper. Emma, I'm not going to slow down. I can slow down, but I'm just worried that you'll all get a bit bored. So what to do is... Actually, I'll slow down a bit then. Okay, so I've opened that up with the cross. I'll talk to Alex while you're all catching up. Right, corner to corner, bring it right up. Okay, corner to corner, I'll hold it for you. Bring your fingers down and run your fingers along the floor. I've got it for you. You need to fold it. Right way, go down. That's it. Yeah, just use the just use the paper. Paper is fine for a template. The difference is it's not as strong for drawing around. So it's quite hard to draw around a piece of paper as a template, but needs must, it really, really won't matter. Right, so as I said, got my circles that I folded in half and half again with the cross in the middle. And I've got three of them. You only need to have two of these, by the way. I just decided to get a bit fancy. Okay, so got those. I folded my paper over in half and keep it in half. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that in half again. When I do this in the classroom, I often just show these steps and then send the kids away to get on with it. They all finish at different times because some people will rattle through the lines. Um, and if they get finished early, then I just make them do another one. It was a different colours or a different shape. So please don't worry if um, you're falling behind right now. I would not expect you all to be working at exactly the right speed. And as I said, these videos I'm going to post online afterwards. So if you've missed anything or glitched in a certain place, please just look them up afterwards. It's just to help you really. Okay, right. So open this up now. So on the back, Use the back because you'll be able to see it better. You'll notice there's a cross. Now, if it helps you with your pencil and your ruler, did you not fold it again? Oh, am I meant to do it? Yeah, you're meant to fold it both ways. Yeah. Okay. You were too busy. What were you playing with then? Why did you miss it? Circles. Right, 
so I have now got this cross. Now what I'm going to do to help it show up is I'm just going to put my ruler on top of that fold line just to help it stand out a little bit. And I'm just going to draw a line down there with pencil. Don't do it with pen because it'll come through the other side. Some of you have maybe worked out now what on earth we're up to here because we've got the crosses on the circles and you've got the cross on the back of the paper. Okay, so corner to corner Alex, hold it with your finger, that corner as well, good job. And then tippy toe your fingers into the middle, that's it, well done. And then bring them up, excellent. This will be good for you, Alex is a Mr Perfectionist. So this lesson he's going to love to do. This is for the, the perfectionist side there. Right, Alex, can you see the cross on the back of here? Would you like to go over that with your ruler and your pencil lines? Does it stand out enough? Okay, if it doesn't stand out enough, just go for it again. I would use a pencil, sweetheart, because the pain might come through the other side. Okay. Well, use the thin viral pen then if it doesn't come through. You're, you know best. You know best. What, what do you mean? It won't matter, it's just the edge of the ruler you need in. It won't matter what side you use of the ruler, just the edge is what you need. It doesn't matter if it's inches or centimetres. Right. I don't like when there's no one talking. I feel like I've got to talk, but I don't want to say. I really have had some background music on today, something nice and relaxing. Okay, you doing okay? Yeah, thank you. I like having Alex with me because it helps me see um, what stage you guys are maybe at because he's primary five so it's important that he's here. Sometimes he may not want to take part but he's going to get forced to take part because if I don't have him here also I don't know what mistakes might be getting made at home. You don't want to go out with dad today, I know. Right, Alex has, can I show everybody? His lines are lovely. No, really, <laughs> like some kind of paper chase. And on the back, he's put his cross with his pen lines, his biro lines, they show up. And he's going to use my circles because there's no point in us making double. But basically, what's going to happen next day, and I hope you're keeping up all right, is I am going to line up the cross of my circle with the cross on the back of the paper. It's really hard to get it perfect on the screen. Okay, do you see that? What I've done there. In fact, that needs to go up a bit, I think. Can't tell if that's your line or not. I that needs to go up a bit. Sorry, it's so hard to see on your phone. So you're kind of doing that while you're lining up the circle with the lines. Daddy's watching, I'll be seeing how far gone we are in it. So you can come back. Right, so two circles are fine. If you've made three, fab, it won't work with just one. Well, it will work with just one, but it won't look as great. So what I want you to do now. I don't know if you can see this okay, is line up your circle with the cross mm. on the paper. Okay, and with a pencil, just in case you make a mistake, draw around that circle. This is when, if you've done it with card, it'll be easier, but if you've done it with paper, just be really careful at this point, because the paper's quite hard to draw around. So I've done my big one. This is on the back, by the way. And the cross should run in the middle. It should all match up perfectly. I've done my, I'm just going to do two, Alex, I'm just going to do two just now, okay? Okay, so should I get the big one? Yeah, you do the big one. I'm just going to do two just because it'll um, be easier. This is going to be one of these lessons where you're probably going to do it today. It might not work very well and then you'll hopefully have learned from it, learned about the process, learned about the technique and you can go away and do it in your own time, okay? Because really all you need is some paper, a circle and some paints and scissors and a print stick. That's all you're going to need. Yeah. Right, so I have now got this. So I've got like almost like a target Wait, there. Oh. It won't matter, but that's not right. That's not straight. Mm -hmm. It needs to be perfectly straight as you can get it. Mm -hmm. I'll hold it while you draw around it. Okay. I normally do this with six and seven, primary six and seven. Oh, hello, gosh. Okay. Sam's cousin's in London. Mm. What's Sam? I wonder if this it's nice to see you in Lucy. Thank you for joining us in London. I hope you're all okay down there. We've got relatives in London. I heard it's quite scary at the minute, so I hope you're all doing okay. This one? Yeah, go for it. So line that target 
the line up perfectly with the line on your folds and then draw around it. Alex, I like how you're using a pen actually because that will show up better on the screen. I'm getting angry faces again. I hope everyone's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't like those angry emojis. Okay, Mr. Perfectionist. What? We kind of have to make it perfect. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Right. Can I show everybody? Because yours is better because it's on the black paper. So that is your... I don't know what step that is now. I've lost count. That's what you're aiming for towards the end of your, your picture. Right. Next up, we are going to cut these circles out. Now, you're not going to cut the paper to get to the circle. You're actually going to fold it back again. Because actually, all you're going to cut is a quarter circle. And it doesn't matter if you do the large or the small first, but you need to do them with the paper folded. So I'm gonna say it one last time. Fold your paper in half and half again, because when you cut the circles out, I only want you to cut a quarter of a circle, okay? Now also, once you've cut that out, you're gonna to want to have something to stick it onto. I've got a piece of A5 card, which is the same size as my square. And Alex has got one as well. It doesn't matter what you stick it onto. Okay, so it's the exact same size. It doesn't matter what, what um, size paper it is. It could work on the other bit of A5 paper you've got left over, or it could work on an A4 piece. It just depends what it is you want to make this into. I'll show you it with my A5 card, but it's up to you what you stick it onto. I mean, you could even stick it onto a massive piece of A3 paper and then cut around it once it's stuck down. It doesn't matter. That's the finer details in life. Right. So as I'm saying, you've got your circles, you've got the target in the middle, you're folding it, you're folding it again, so that when you cut it out, all you're cutting out, Alex, you can go with me if you want, actually, you need to put a scissors, so I'll do it first. All you're cutting out is the quarter circle. Somebody out there is probably going to do this wrong. Don't know who it is. Oh, it's Sam Jones from them. I keep forgetting I'm not supposed to be saying names on the live stream. Hello, Sam's cousin. Okay. So I've cut that bit out. I'm cutting this bit out. Concentrate, concentrate, Mrs. C. Stay on that pencil line. Sweetheart, there's some scissors for you. Okay. You're going to love this. This is when eyes in the classroom only light up. You've got this. Okay. Which is going to get stuck down. Like that. Okay. So. Glue stick. We wee bit of advice for you. Put the glue onto what it is that you want to stick it to. And get the glue right to the edges. You alright? You don't know what to do. Have you drawn your right? Fold your paper in half and half again. Okay, so, so it's just a quarter of the paper again. Yeah. You need to be able to see the lines, so you're going to want to fold it that way. Stuck on? Okay. So you cut out the circles. Yes, Michelle, you cut out the circles, but do not cut them out as a whole circle. Cut them out. I'm going to show you Alex as a way to do his, so I'll double show you that. Just somebody's going to do this wrong out there. I don't know who it's going to be. So I'll double show you before you do that, so don't worry. So Alex is folding his paper in half and half again, so it's just going to be a quarter of the circle that he's actually cutting out. But when you open it up, it'll become a full circle. That's really yeah, important. I that. Right, fold it in half again. Michelle's wanting to see what to do. It's not Michelle. I think Michelle's the girl's mummy's. Mummy, mummy, the girl's mummy. From my P5 class. Okay, so he folded, Alex has folded it in half, and he's folding it in half again. He's only cutting out that bit. Right, go for it. Cut out a quarter of the circle. Okay. Okay? Wait, should right. I do the first part? It won't matter what one you do, but you've got, don't open it when you're cutting what it. What did you do? It, I did both of them. I ended up with this and this. Okay. Okay. Just do nice cutting though. As he's cutting, 
this will now open up and it will be a ring with your stripy lines and you're now going to stick that onto here but when you stick it down don't stick it in the same direction so when you stick it down stick it when it's been twisted and turned my glue start to dry out a little bit like that can you see that okay and then you've got your last circle so when that opens up you end up with that so when you stick this on either go that way or you can twist it up and down the way i don't know what way you want to go i'm going to put a little bit more glue on that because it's starting to dry out a second ago very cut and dude then go across the way if your circles aren't perfect at this point if you've sort of cut them out and they're a wee bit like an oval you might find that this doesn't match up perfectly but if you've done perfect circles, it should match up perfectly. Okay, right, I'm going to help Alex with his, which means we'll get another chance to do step two. Okay, there you go. He's, mad. He's actually like laying it down on the table just now to see what to do with it all. And I'll get you a piece of card, Al, so you can stick that on there. You happy? Yeah, I'm really happy with that. You've done a great job. Let's just do this blue one because we've got two to show the boys and girls. Which your mummy's and dad's. Ah, it's up to you. I feel like you put the glue. Put it, it won't matter where you glue it, just as long as you get it glued. It might be a bit sticky if you do it that way. It's totally up to you. So again, I folded my paper in half and half again. I'm putting a cross on the back. Follow those lines. If you're a mathematical person out there, you'll have found this amazing today. If you're quite an expressive, messy person today, you've probably found this all quite stressful. Um, but I'm trying to do a little something for everyone. Last week's lesson was quite expressive. It was quite, I want to say feminine. I don't know if, I, I don't know if that's politically correct in this day and age. But it was very pretty. The art was pretty last week. This week's art lesson is a bit more technical. It's a bit more graphical. It's a bit more funky. It's a bit more cool. So hopefully the boys will enjoy this a little bit more. You know, we need to, we need to go for everyone here. You can cut off that, but yeah, he's, when he's, can I show everyone what you're saying? When he stuck it down, he stuck it down, so it's hanging off the back there a little bit. And he's got a tiny, Mr. Perfectionist, he's got a tiny slither. Do you see this absolute slither of white card poking out the back, which he's now freaking out about and asking if he could trim it off. Of course you can trim it off. Don't, don't panic over a tiny what's that one millimeter of card right stick your circles down so i've done my cross no you don't need to <laughs> don't cut it now you're wasting everyone's time get the circle stuck down so you can see your finished result mm. you can cut that off once they're all signed off lined up a circle with cross one lined up my medium circle with the cross could you imagine if we tried to do this with Harris being in the room right now? Um, it would work. A minute, it would definitely not work. Um, where's the smaller circle that I did? And the, oh, my circle template just moved. Pop that back in there. I just wanted to show you what it's going to look like. Three. I've never done three before. Maybe quite tricky. It yeah, is working. It's not. Where, where did you put the glue? On that, yeah, because it's getting too fiddly because it's thin paper. Put the glue on the card, which is what I did and recommended you did, but yeah, wanted to do it your own way. Sometimes you have to make mistakes to learn. All the time you have to make mistakes to learn. So I've got that. So I am now going to grab the scissors from Ali. Validate. Cutting one quarter circle out the large one. Got that out. Following this line, cutting it, I'll help you in a minute. On that one. So I've got four pieces now. Have I got any card left? Yeah, two, three, three. Should have probably said, by the way, stick down the square background first. Don't, st don't start, when you stick down your circles, don't start with the small circle. You might find it quite hard to line up. So I've got this. 
I'm sticking that Mine's down. Ripped. What do you mean it ripped? That's because you've pulled it up and taken it on and off and on and off 20 million times. No, it's ripped. Well, it's ripped, so you can just stick it down. No, don't peel it all off. Right, stick it like that. I just want to show everybody what it looks like. Can you pick the bit off the floor, please, that you just pong on the floor? You won't actually see the rip. It's because you keep pulling it off and pull it on, and the paper's very, very thin and fragile. Somebody, I got a message from somebody yesterday asking about they've got a person in their house that is a perfectionist and often screws up work and wants to start again and did they have any tips? And the answer is no, I don't have any tips because I'm struggling with this myself and if you've got any tips for me, I would love to hear them. If I've got an absolute perfectionist sitting across from me right now who... It's fine, stop panicking. I mean, what is wrong with that? And he's yeah, freaking out, sitting next to me. <laughs> sitting out. But it's a wee bit off. But I mean, you could, if you wanted to, just colour that in. But from a distance, you don't even see that. So please stop being a panic merchant. Right. I think that's lovely. I think that's okay. Alex, you can disappear while I'm talking to Bruno. Okay. You can go and get your game again if you want. Yay. Um, so I've stuck with that one. I've now got my second drink. The glue's dried really, really quickly. Please don't make a lot of noise in the background. Okay. Just gonna stick this bit down. Can't wait to see what colour creations you've all come up with. This is a lovely thing to do at Christmas, by the way. We have done these as Christmas cards in the past. Um, and what I do is I don't put anything in the middle circle. I leave it plain. And with the middle circle that you've got, I make a shape of like a star or a tree or something that can go in the middle. It always looks really, really funky. I'll show you what I mean by that actually. So with it folded in half, you might just cut out a simple tree shape. Get it symmetrical. So to get it symmetrical, don't open it up. Keep it shut. So with this bit, it's so fiddly. And I can stick that into the middle here. But I mean, you could even, oh, you could make Easter egg cards. You could do an Easter egg. Okay, so we've done this in the past as Christmas cards, but I mean, you could take that off and make that like an egg shape. Um, so yeah, Ali, <laughs> you've got white gaps too, but it's working. My eyes are going all weird. Yeah. You need to, the trick to this is to not get bored halfway through, not decide that no. you've done enough lines when you haven't. It, more, the more lines, the better. And if you have got little white gaps, it really, really doesn't matter. You won't see them from a distance. Um, please, please, please don't panic about it. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. I've got a feeling that this is going to be one of these lessons where very few of you will be finished this after the live feed. I've got a feeling that today, throughout the day, I'll be getting photos sent to me. So please, let me see what you've been up to. Let me see how they've turned out. Message me if you've had any trouble or any problems. I've got a feeling that glitching is going to be one of the problems today, but I can't really do much about that. I've tried my best to multitask and see at the bar. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Numbers are starting to drop now. Less people are watching. Um, post away. I will hopefully see you all later on next week we are going to be thinking about easter so i sent a post earlier to see if you've got any chocolate eggs on the go this week keep all the packaging because you're going to need them for the lesson don't worry if you don't have any packaging and just keep going with it and um, thank you for all your support as per usual i hope that you're all keeping healthy and happy and i will speak to you all soon love and hugs bye bye